When I was 16 years old, I planned to commit suicide because life was just too heavy. It was just too much for me. It was just too much. I was an atheist who, who had been through a lot of hurt and who had been hurt by a lot of people and was really self-centered and selfish. And, and all I thought about was my own pain and I couldn't get out of it. And finally, I just, I decided that, that I didn't want to, I didn't want to keep doing life anymore. And when you're an atheist, it kind of, if you don't, if life gets too hard, there's really, there's really no reason to keep going. I don't know. For me, I was just too selfish. And so I planned to commit suicide. And the day that I planned to commit suicide, <laughs> I came home from school and I was having a nervous breakdown, I think. And I remember my grandma looking at me going, just understanding, she just knew. I don't know how she knew. I guess it was God. But she said, something's wrong with you and you have to go to church. <laughs> and I said, there's no way I'm going to church. Those happy Christians that never have any problems. And I hated Christians. I hated people who talked about Jesus because they always seemed to be pointing their finger at me and telling me, you know, this hateful thing, hateful speech. You know, God hates you because you do this. And if you do this, then God hates you and he's going to send you to hell. And, and so I never wanted to be around Christians. And I, I sure didn't want to go. But she just kept on and she would not stop screaming at me until I finally was just like, okay, if you stop screaming, I'll go and sit in this building just so that you'll shut up pretty much of what I said. And I went there and... I sat in the back and I crossed my arms and I pretty much was like waiting for it to be over so I could leave and fulfill the plan that I'd had to commit suicide that night. And uh, the guy starts talking, the preacher, he says, he starts talking about pain in people's lives. And he seemed to just describe my whole life, my whole story. It seemed like he was talking straight to me. And I was getting kind of weirded out. <laughs> I was like, I gotta get out of here, this is weird. And then, uh, and then the guy, the preacher, white-headed southern preacher was like, start crying. And that got my attention. I was, I, was, I was just thinking, why is he crying? And all of a sudden he says, there's a suicidal spirit in the room. And I, all the hair stood up on my arms, and I was like, I got to get out of here. This is weird. And he was like, he said, he just kept crying. And he said, please come up. We want to we wanna pray for you because God has a plan for your life. And I know that you don't understand why there's so much pain in your heart. But God, God made you. And he made you to be to be connected with him. He made you so that he could love you and so that you could love him back and experience a life like you've never known before in him, just knowing that God is real and that he loves you and he has a plan for your life. Please come up and let us pray for you, whoever it is that has that suicidal spirit. And he cried while he said that. And I had too much pride. I was like, there's no way I'm going to go stand in front of these Christians and say, I have problems. <laughs> I was like, no way. Even though I thought it was really weird. <laughs> so I got up and I, I went towards the door. And finally, I was like, I'm out of here. And I went towards the door and there was a man standing at the door, another man with white hair. And he had been crying, I guess. I don't know what they're crying a lot, I guess. <laughs> He was crying and he caught my attention because I had never seen an old man cry before. And I'm looking at this guy and he said, the Lord wants me to speak to you. And he said, he knows the pain in your heart. He's seen you cry yourself to sleep at night. And he died to take that pain out of your heart. He experienced it while he was on the cross so you don't have to keep holding it there anymore. And I just looked at him I was like, wow. 
And he kept talking about other things that he couldn't have known. And I, he said, would you please let me pray for you? And I felt like he loved me, a stranger. He really loved me. And he said, God loves you, and that's why I love you, and I want to pray for you. I said, okay. Finally, I said, okay, you can pray for me. And then he put his hand on my shoulder and started praying, and it felt like God of the universe showed up. And I saw who I was. I saw that I I was sinful. I saw that there was this perfect, holy, loving God who was right in front of me, the God of the universe. Why does he care about me? I don't know. I'm just... He's just standing there, and I just feel like God's saying, you know, he's showing me who I am. I'm all the love I thought I had. I was selfish all the time. I thought I loved my brothers and sisters, but that was only till they got on my nerves. (laughs) And I thought I loved my, my boyfriend and my friends, but if they did me wrong, it was always selfish and conditional. And I understood that you know, sleeping with my boyfriend was wrong. It just felt like I just understood my sin. It was not, it was not loving. It was not selfless. It was, it was selfish, all of it. And God's standing there showing me this, this picture of myself. And at the same time, he's wrapping his arms around me going, I want to make you new. I want to make you new. I want to make you new. I want to show you how to how to live, how to love. I want, you, I want you to know that I love you just the way you are, but I'm not going to leave you that way. And so I just remember waking up the next day, and I looked at my ceiling, and I was like, okay, um, I wasn't supposed to wake up today, so why, why, why am I waking up? <laughs> why, why do you want me here? What do you want with me? And my whole life has been an adventure since then. 